And John uttered the words that echoed down the very last corridor of hell itself and has made hell tremble ever since. He says, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Not all the blood of beasts on Jewish altars slain could give one guilty conscience peace or wash away one stain. But Christ, the heavenly Lamb, took all our sins away. He lifts the God and Samson could never lift. He solved a problem that Solomon with all his wisdom could never solve. He led captivity captive. He died and rose again. And he pledged my resurrection in his resurrection. Because he said, if I die and rise, you die and you'll rise again. And if I go to my Father, you'll have a place in heaven with me. Hello everybody, this is Brother Dakota with True Gospel Radio. And in this video I want to talk about what the Bible has to say about regeneration or being born again because I've been talking to some Calvinists lately who believe that um, you can't repent until after you're saved and regenerated and uh, the Bible says the exact opposite it says you have to repent first before you can become born again or regenerated or saved and so the Bible tells us that um, when people hear the preaching of the gospel, the Holy Spirit is at work to convict them of their sin, to open their eyes to the truth in order for them to change their own hearts of their own, by their own free will and for them to get saved. And, uh, you know, this is totally different than what Calvinists teach because they think that since we're born with a sinful nature that... You, you have to receive uh, regeneration through the Holy Spirit, which uh, gives you a new physical nature, which the Bible does not teach that. John 8.32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Romans 10.17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So faith is not something that God you know, just decides to give certain people and decides to not give to other people faith is a choice and when people hear the preaching of the word that builds faith and they can either choose to believe God and have faith or choose not to believe God's word and be filled with unbelief John 16 8 talks about how the Holy Spirit works through the preaching of the gospel Jesus said that the Holy Spirit was going to come and uh, when, when the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2, he worked through the preaching of the gospel to get people saved. It says, And when he has come, the Holy Spirit, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Psalm 119.59 talks about um, how when somebody hears the gospel, they have their own um, free will choice to make, and they they will examine uh, their motives, they will examine the consequences of living in sin and the rewards of obeying the truth, and they will decide for themselves. It says, I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. Now, uh, Calvinists also believe that God's grace is irresistible, meaning that anyone who God chooses to save you know, they're going to accept God's grace and get saved uh, whether they want to or not because it's so, um, you know, powerful that there's, there's no way they can say no to it. But that's not what the Bible says. It says in Acts 17.51 when, when uh, Stephen preached the gospel to the Jews and they got really angry and they stoned him, um, you know, before they stoned him, he said, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye, uh, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do you. In Acts 3.19, um, when Peter is preaching the gospel, he says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. He didn't say, be converted, be saved by the Holy Spirit, and then repent later. He said, you're not saved, you're not... Um, forgiven of your sins until after you first repent. Acts 2.40, uh, Peter was preaching. He said, save yourselves from this untoward generation or this wicked generation. Now, um, if Calvinists, 
theology was true, he wouldn't be able to tell them to save themselves. Uh, save themselves, rather. Um, so, this idea that Calvinists believe in that people aren't able to repent without first being regenerated by the Holy Spirit, um, the reason that they believe that is because they think that we're all born with a sinful nature and we're incapable of doing any good, of keeping God's commandments at all, until um, the Holy Spirit comes into our hearts and changes our physical nature and removes that sinful nature. Everybody has a human nature, not a sinful nature. Um, we, we all have a human nature that we can freely choose to either sin or do righteousness. And so Ecclesiastes 7.29 explains this. Uh, it says, Lo, this only have I found, that God has made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. So people are not sinners by birth or by necessity. They're sinners by choice. Deuteronomy 30, verse 11 says in the King James Version, For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. Um, in the NASB, it says this commandment, um, is not too difficult for thee. And that's really the correct rendering of what the Hebrew says. Um, Hebrews 6.1 and Acts 26.20 both um, talk about how repentance comes first and then faith. Not like the Calvinists teach that, you know, just faith without repentance and then repentance comes later. Hebrews 6.1 says, Repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Acts 26, 20 says that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Mark 1, 15, Jesus preaching, he said, and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Luke 6, 45 says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. Now the heart there, the Greek word is cardia, and in Thayer's Greek lexicon it says that this word means the will and character. So, um, the will is influenced by hearing the truth of the gospel. There's motives presented. There's, you know, we see the love of God toward us when we see how Jesus died for our sins. And that motivates us because the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4 that we love him because he first loved us. So when we choose to believe the gospel, um, it is because we see God's love uh, demonstrated toward us um, because as it says in uh, Romans 5 7 it says that while we were or God commends his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for uh, for us and so um, that causes us that uh, subdues our hearts and causes us to want to obey God to love God with all our heart and to love our neighbor as ourself um, and so this regeneration, like I said, it's not a change of physical, um, your physical constitution or your physical nature, but it's a change of moral character. And that's what uh, in the Old Testament was prophesied by Ezekiel and Jeremiah, Ezekiel 36, 25, um, and Jeremiah 31, verse 34, or 31 to 34. It talks about how God would create in those who get born again, a new heart. And so that's a new character, a new uh, disposition. It's a change from being a selfish sinner to being an unselfish uh, saint that lives holy and obeys God's commandments. And uh, this is what Charles Finney said about regeneration in his uh, systematic theology. He said, when God affirms that he regenerates the soul with or by the truth, we have no right to infer that he does it in some other way. This he does affirm. Therefore, the Bible has settled the philosophy of regeneration, that he exerts any other than a moral influence 
or the influence of divine teaching and illumination is sheer assumption. Um, Ezekiel 18.31 and James uh, 4, 8 to 9 tells us about how um, we are supposed to change our own ways in order to get saved. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? James 4, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. So, um, conversion is something that we do of our own free will. But regeneration um, in the Bible, when you read verses about regeneration, it's talking about the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. So when the Holy Spirit comes and convicts us and convinces us of the truth, there is a part that the Holy Spirit plays in our salvation, in us getting born again. But we can't just have um, faith without works, which is dead. You know, there are many that say that they believe in God, but they haven't been saved. They haven't been born again um, or regenerated because they haven't done their own job of repenting, which is conversion. Um, the Greek word for um, repent, uh, metanoia, um, in Thayer's, it also means um, convert or conversion. And Romans 8.13 says, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. So, contrary to Calvinist theology that um, regeneration has to come first before you can repent, um, the Bible clearly says that if you don't repent, if you don't through the power of the Holy Spirit put to death your sins, um, you know, your bad habits, then you won't be saved. It's that simple. And so um, that's what regeneration is. It's a change of moral character. And we really need to understand that. So uh, hopefully that helps you understand um, what the Bible says about regeneration, what it truly is. And hope you enjoyed this video. Please uh, like and subscribe if you would.